up next. So if you don't have clothes, if you haven't been haired, if you haven't been made up, um, we'll get to you next. We've got uh, two World War I related minutes tied to the fact, of course, this is the centenary of the start of World War I, 1914. One pays tribute to the heroism of Canadian nursing sisters in World War I. The other is the story of the Winnipeg Falcons hockey team who won the first ever gold medal ever given at the Olympic Games. The stories of the nursing sisters and the Winnipeg Falcons, both of them were kind of underdog stories. And, and I like the weight of telling two stories that if we don't tell them, they'll probably never get told. The other thing that I like is that they are stories that tell a story about the war, but kind of through a different doorway. They're not necessarily the sort of overt war stories. They're stories about, um, about he Canadian heroes. Here we go. We're rolling. And action. I'm playing Eden Pringle, who was a real nurse back in the war. Uh, she enlisted when she was 22, I believe, and came over and served as a, a nursing sister. And action. I've never played someone who was actually a real person before. It's great. I love it. It's such an honor, especially someone who did such an honorable thing, serving in the army, helping to shape our country into what it is today. It's a lot of pressure because you don't want to you don't want to mess that kind of thing up. You know, it wasn't easy growing up on Sergeant Avenue. Much Icelandic boys that no one wanted around. Excellent. <laughs> Cut. I know uh, for, for the actors involved, we, we're, we're putting a lot of uh, pressure on ourselves to, to really make these great. Um, for this one, we can uh, lose our skates. Yeah, what happened to our shoes? Nope. Hockey is, is very important to me. I grew up playing, I still play today, but uh, um, my grandpa served uh, and my brother is uh, uh, currently training as a uh, uh, lieutenant in the Canadian Armed Forces. So this one was uh, hit pretty close to home. It makes me want, want to make a genuine or, or, or do my best to make a genuine, like really carry myself like a hockey player, or really carry myself like a soldier, make it as authentic as possible so that uh, uh, when my grandpa and brother see it, they'll be proud. Action! 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 We always go out and we look for people who know how to make movies, how to make films, and this is what it is. It's a, effectively a one minute feature in each case. And then what we bring is the preoccupation with authenticity to it. So you can look at this, you can say, those costumes, those are real costumes. We have an expert on set who knows how people dressed, how people talked, what kind of phrases they used, because that's important. These would be the very fresh, you know, straight off the truck still in their uniform, still probably in this wet gear. Yeah. They haven't been stripped off yet. These are used for film. Yeah, they're used for film and they just wouldn't be in a working right. hospital area. I'm the historian. I've been working since the beginning of the project to try to help make sure it's as historically accurate as we can possibly make it. There's always little things that are really hard to produce a hundred years later, but uh, we try to make sure the uniforms are right, we try to make sure that the backgrounds are right, that the actors are walking and talking the way the soldiers and nurses would have at the time. And I've had a little bit of a hand in all of that. Sister Six, take one. Yep. Mark. Sister Six, take one. Yep. We're telling stories about real people, so we want to find as much as we can about their lives. It's really interesting to go and find out about these women and boys, who they were and sort of uncover their lives and uh, to be quite honest I get a bit lost in tracking them down through Ancestry.com and uh, Library and Archives Canada and whatever um, documents we can find. It's a lot of fun. I think when we think of history a lot of the time we think of old black and white pictures and people with funny clothes and funny hairstyles who are somehow from another galaxy in a way. And when you see these in close up and you live with these people you look and say there are people who are like us you know they were frightened they were dirty they were scared they didn't know how to do it, and yet they reacted in remarkable ways. Historians spend a lot of our time in dusty books and uh, old videotape and things and it's a lot of fun to see it come alive and to know that you're having a hand in it. And, as one of the producers said, it's nice to know you're doing something that will mean something a hundred years from now when someone looks at it, it's still our Canadian history. There was a real desire to get this right. There was no good enough, like it, it had to be done right because this was to celebrate and remember real people that sacrificed. And I think that, that weight um, was a positive force the whole time. And it still is. 
there's a bit of an honor to be able to capture a moment of Canadian history and have that forever captured. So I feel very honored to be able to do it. So just just a huge point of pride to, to be able to represent a, a, a small part of Canadian history and, and try to make it significant to uh, to the people today.